be Bernie Sanders, and this was a perception I had. Mm -hmm. You would say a policy when you were running against him for the nomination. Right, right. And the next day you go, yeah, well, free college for everyone. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like when you run for a, a fifth grade class. Yeah, right. That's I'll give right. you free yeah. everything. Chocolate milk for Chocolate everybody. Chocolate milk for everyone and yeah. more recess. <laughs> yeah. More in other pizza. Words, and then it makes it and look then, like you're a stick in the mud. I know. And then when you say, well, wait a minute, it, where, where's no the sense. money going to come from? Then you're, what a minute, are you against free college? <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you saw there was a discussion between Hillary Clinton and Howard Stern. Clinton was on Stern's radio show talking about a whole bunch of things, but inevitably, one of the main focuses was Hillary Clinton's disagreements with Bernie Sanders. There's been some videos that have already talked about this, specifically around Clinton saying Bernie Sanders cost her the race, Bernie Sanders hurt her chances against Trump, Bernie Sanders stayed too long in the race, the Russians were helping Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders didn't help her enough after he lost All of those are lies. As many others have pointed out, Bernie Sanders worked extremely hard for Hillary Clinton after he lost, despite the fact that the process was in many ways stacked against Bernie Sanders in unfair ways. He kept his word and he worked his ass off for Hillary Clinton. All of that was, you know, just lies by Clinton and Stern gave no pushback there. But this particular instance is also really interesting because it shows how rich people mock the concerns of the rest of us. Howard Stern and Hillary Clinton are both very, very wealthy people. And here they try to make the case that Bernie Sanders' positions, whether it's free college tuition or whether it's Medicare for all, are basically, you know, a fifth grade student promising free chocolate milk for everybody, trying to make it like Bernie Sanders is, you know, a childish person speaking to childish Americans. And it's up to people like Howard Stern and Hillary Clinton, the adults in the room, quote unquote, to ask us how we're going to pay for all of these things. And it's the most condescending BS that I've heard in a while. And it comes from two people who have no idea what it's like to survive as a working class person in this economic context. They do not understand that. Bernie Sanders' positions are not radical. Bernie Sanders' positions are not frivolous. The demand that people have basic education and basic health care and basic human dignity is not the equivalent of a child wanting chocolate milk versus plain milk. It's not the equivalent of a fifth grade class president demanding more recess or more pizza, as Hillary Clinton and Howard Stern would suggest. It's about guaranteeing all people have their dignity and equal opportunity guaranteed as citizens. Something that rich people like Howard Stern and Hillary Clinton and many others take for granted, but which for millions upon millions of Americans literally restrains their ability to live a decent life or puts them one misfortune away from bankruptcy or destitution or poverty or homelessness. That's what this is about. When Bernie Sanders is fighting for everyone to get the education and health care they need, he is not being frivolous. Basic human rights are not chocolate milk. Basic human rights are not recess. Basic human rights are not pizza. Hillary Clinton and Howard Stern here are ripping the mask off, you know, a certain type of of liberalism, which is supposedly about being progressive. But at the end of the day, they show their utter disdain for regular people and what those regular people need. And Hillary Clinton is like, well, you know, I, I'm not against these things, but I'm the one here in the corner of the room saying, how are we going to pay for it? Hillary knows damn well how we're going to pay for it. And that's why she calls it unreasonable, because it'll mean people like her and Howard Stern pay more goddamn taxes and they would rather keep a few extra hundred or a few extra thousand dollars than guarantee every man, woman, and child lives a decent life in their country. It's greed epitomized and if you want to talk frivolousness, it's rich people on the goddamn radio pretending that, you know, they've earned their luxuries while everyone else wanting education and healthcare are just plain being unreasonable and acting like children and they have to be the adults in the goddamn room. It's fucking awful. 
We know how Bernie Sanders is going to pay for his plans. In some cases, he has specific proposals to deal with specific policy pieces. For instance, when talking about free public university and college, Bernie Sanders has said, with a financial transaction tax alone, you can pay for it by taxing stock trades and to a lesser degree, mutual fund trades and those sorts of transactions, which are overwhelmingly done by the wealthy because regular people might trade stocks and mutual funds from time to time, but not in the hundreds or thousands of trades, you know, a day or year or what have you. Those taxes will be levied on the wealthiest people and they will pay for the educations of every single person who wants to go to a public university in the United States of America. Whether they're rich or poor, everyone will benefit from it, but the taxes will be levied on those people and those families that can afford to pay it. And beyond that, Bernie Sanders has talked about raising taxes on the wealthy through wealth taxes, through capital gains taxes, through higher income taxes. So whether it's education or health care or the other programs Bernie Sanders supports, he will demand those payments come from the richest people and the most powerful corporations. You can disagree with Bernie Sanders. You can disagree with him and say, I don't think that we should be taxing the rich more. Or I don't think we should be taxing the most profitable corporations more. I don't think regular working class people deserve basic human dignity. Take those positions, Hillary. Take those positions, Howard. Take them honestly and goddamn clearly. But Clinton and Stern, they're too cowardly to do that. They're too chicken to do that. They're too scared to do that because they damn well know that in 2019, regular people by the millions support those programs. And you can't just say, I want you to be poor and precarious like you could in the 1990s when Clinton's husband was president. You can't do that anymore. The left has real energy and momentum behind it, thanks in part to people like Bernie Sanders. And so now all these neoliberals can say is, oh, you know, these are great things. I really do support them, but I just don't know how we're going to pay for them. They damn well know. They damn well know it's by taxing them. It's by taxing them. It's by making sure that maybe they have less frivolity. Maybe they don't need a fifth house or a sixth house. Maybe they don't need that extra few million. It's so ironic, isn't it, guys? Because, you know, it's two millionaires here, multi, multi millionaires, very wealthy, influential people going on about how, you know, the, the regular working class children just want that extra chocolate milk recess and pizza, but we don't know how to pay for it. And they get Bernie Sanders here selling them the impossible dream. When it's these people who literally have more money than anyone can reasonably spend in a lifetime talking about goddamn frivolity. It would be funny if it wasn't so infuriating and tragic given the level of suffering regular people face every single day in the United States. So let it be known that Bernie Sanders has a pragmatic plan. Bernie Sanders' plan is achievable. In many ways, elements of his plan have been implemented across the world in countries that have less money than the United States. Less money per capita than the United States have achieved things like free university education and free health care. They've achieved these things through a greater distribution of societal wealth in favor of regular working class people and the social programs they need. They know this. Hillary Clinton isn't a dummy. Howard Stern isn't either. They know all this. Now they have to lie and we have to do our job in calling out their lies.